In the last lecture, we learned through an example how the call stack behaves when the recursive function is called. We learned the relationship between the call stack and the recursive function. We also learned that it is important for us to understand the behavior of the call stack because it helps us in finding the space complexity of any recursive algorithm. Now we are ready to understand how to find the space complexity of a recursive algorithm. The lecture is about space complexity of recursive algorithms, finding space complexity. So let's get started and let's see what are the topics. The topics are a recursive function recap, function calls and activation records, space complexity of a recursive algorithm. We'll first re recall what we learned in the last lecture. We took an example of a recursive function and through that example we observed a certain things. We will recall those things and it will set the base for this lecture. So let's get the quick recap of the recursive function which we discussed in the last lecture. This was the example we discussed in the last lecture and it can be observed that this function fun is calling itself within its own body. Hence, we can say this function fun is a recursive function. And we learned how the call stack behaves when this recursive function is called. We observed a couple of things in the last lecture. The first observation was, for input size 3, the highest number of activation records is 3. We can see here the input size is 3. We are calling this function fun and we are passing 3 to it which will be received by this variable n. When this function is called with input size 3, the highest number of activation records at some point in time is 3. This is what we observed in the last lecture. If the input size is 10, the highest number of activation records will be 10. If the input size is 100, then the highest number of activation records will be 100. So it is clear that for input size n, the highest number of activation records is n. So the maximum number of activation records within a stack will be n when the input size is n. So these are some of the observations from the previous lecture. Also, there is one more observation. The number of function calls is also 3 when the input size is 3. Here we can see that we are calling fun3. This means the input size is 3. First fun3 is called, then fun2 and then fun1. Because this function is calling itself within its own body and every time when it is calling, it is decrementing n by 1. So first fun3 is called, then fun2 and then fun1. So there are a total of 3 function calls. For input size 3, the number of function calls is 3. For input size 10, the number of function calls is 10. And in the same way we can say, for input size n, the number of function calls is n. But apart from the relationship between the input size and the number of function calls, it seems like there is also the relation between the highest number of activation records and the number of function calls. If the highest number of activation records is 3, then the number of function calls is 3. If the highest number of activation records is n, then the number of function calls is n. So it seems like the number of function calls is same as the highest number of activation records. So if we know how many function calls are there of a recursive function, then we can determine the highest number of activation records. And we are eventually interested in knowing the maximum number of activation records because it will help us find the space complexity of an algorithm. So from the number of function calls, we can determine the highest number of activation records. From this example, it seems like this. But can we say this relation always holds? Can we say number of function calls is always same as the highest number of activation records? not only for recursive functions but also for normal functions? We took just one example, but what about other functions? What about non-recursive functions? Let's now try to understand the relationship between function calls and activation records and that too through an example. So now let's move to this topic. <laughs> 
In order to understand the relationship between the function calls and activation records, we will now take a simple example. In this example, we can observe that within the main function, we are calling three functions f, g and h. Within the f function, we are performing some task. Within the function g, we are performing some task. And similarly, within h function also, we are performing some task. After completion of these functions, we return back to the main function. Now let's understand how the call stack behaves when these functions are called. This is the call stack. Now let's understand the behavior of the call stack when these functions are called. First, the main function is called because the execution always starts from main. As the main function is called, the activation record of the main function goes inside the call stack. Within the activation record, I haven't mentioned any information about the main function because we are not interested in the information which exists within the main function. We are interested in finding the relationship between the function calls and the activation records. Hence, I am showing the activation record like this. This activation record belongs to the main function. Now, within this main function, we are calling the function f. So, f function is called and the activation record of this function goes inside the stack. This activation record belongs to the function f. Within the function f, variable x is declared and initialized to 10. Then after this, x is incremented by 1. We are not interested with the task which is performed by this function because we are only interested in finding the relation between function calls and activation records. So, let's focus on this. After completion of this function, we know we will get back to the main function. As we are returning back to the main function, the activation record will go outside the stack. So, let's get back to the main function. But where we should land? We should land at the next instruction, that is, this instruction. And now, the activation record goes outside the stack. We are right now in the main function as it is indicated by the call stack as well. Now we need to call the function g. Let's call function g and the activation record of this function goes inside the stack. Now we can observe we have two activation records at this moment. And after completion of this function, we will land at this line. And now we know the activation record of g goes outside the stack as we are done with this function g. Again, we are in the main function. And we can observe, we have only one activation record at this moment. Now let's call the function h. And within the function h, we'll perform some task and this function will also return back. But first, let's push the activation record of h within the stack. After completion of this function, we return back to the main function and the activation record of h goes outside the stack. We can observe after this statement, we do not have any statement to execute in the main function. Therefore, we are done with the main function also and hence the activation record of the main function goes outside the stack. So, this is the behavior of the call stack when these functions are called. Now, there is one interesting observation. We observed throughout that the maximum or highest number of activation records is 2 at any point of time. But how many function calls are there? We have called function main, then f, then g and then h. Clearly, there are four function calls. So, the number of function calls is four. We can observe that the highest number of activation records is two and the number of function calls is four for this specific program. So, can we say the highest number of activation records is same as the number of function calls? We can clearly observe these two are not same. So, coming back to the question, can we say number of function calls is always same as the highest number of activation records? No, not at all. Number of function calls is not always equal to the highest number of activation records. In the recursive function we took in the last lecture, we observed that the number of function calls is same as the highest number of activation records. But in this example, we can observe that the number of function calls is not same as the highest number of activation records. 
So it is clear that the number of function calls is not always equal to the highest number of activation records. Although we took an example of non-recursive functions, but we can observe the same pattern for recursive functions as well. We took an example of a simple recursive function, but if we have a complex recursive function, then we will observe the number of function calls is not always equal to the highest number of activation records. So, from the number of function calls, we cannot determine the highest number of activation records. Full stop. So, now we know what is the relationship between the number of function calls and the highest number of activation records. It is not always equal relationship. So, we are clear about the relationship between function calls and activation records at this moment. But we know that we need to determine the highest number of activation records at any point in time because it will help us determine the space complexity of a specific algorithm. But as we observed from the number of function calls, we cannot determine the highest number of activation records. Do we need to always analyze our algorithms through call stack? Do we need to analyze each and every function call and observe the behavior of the call stack? The answer to these questions is no, you do not have to do this. I explained the concept of the call stack because I want you to know what happens behind the scenes when a normal function is called or when a recursive function is called. It is not mandatory for you to analyze your algorithms through the call stack. It is not at all mandatory. You do not have to determine the highest number of activation records by doing the complete analysis through the call stack. Instead, there is a better way to do this. We can determine the highest number of activation records and the easiest way to do this is to know the depth of the function calls. So, from the depth of the function calls, we can determine the highest number of activation records. Let's see this how through this example. Let's try to find the depth of function calls for this example. For this purpose, we need to draw the tree like this. This tree shows that the main function is called first and then from the main function, we are calling the function f, the function g and the function h. So, from main function, we are calling three functions. Now, we can find the depth of this tree which will give us the depth of the function calls because the depth of the tree is same as the depth of the function calls. Here we are calling the function main, then f, then g and then h. And what is the depth of this tree? In order to find the depth of this tree, we need to know how many levels are there in this tree. This is the first level where the main function is called. In the second level, we have three function calls f, g and h. So, this is level number two. So, there are a total of two levels and hence the depth of this tree is two. Therefore, the depth of function calls is also 2. And we know the highest number of activation records for this example is also 2. So, from this observation, it is clear the maximum number of activation records is same as the depth of function calls. And now you know, if you find the depth of function calls, then you can easily find the maximum number of activation records. There is no need to analyze the behavior of the call stack for a specific algorithm. Instead, just find the depth of function calls. This will give you the maximum number of activation records. That's it. So, in this way, we can find the maximum number of activation records. Remember, the depth of the tree is same as the depth of function calls. And how do we determine the depth? We can determine the depth by knowing the number of levels. Here we have two levels and hence the depth is 2. Therefore, the depth of function calls is also 2 and the maximum number of activation records is also 2. So, now we know how to find the maximum number of activation records. We are completely ready to understand how to find the space complexity of a recursive algorithm. So, let's move to this topic. We learned in one of our lectures how to find the space complexity of an algorithm. Space complexity of an algorithm is same as space required to store the source code plus space required for simple variables 
plus space for the data structures used plus space required for stack for recursive algorithms. We learned that these two parameters are constants. They take constant amount of space. Hence, we can remove them from the space complexity of an algorithm as they will not contribute much to the space complexity. So, let's remove them for now. Now, we have space for the data structures used plus space required for stack for recursive algorithms. Now, what is the meaning of space required for stack for recursive algorithms? Here, we are talking about the call stack. Now, you know why we studied the call stack? Because the space required for the call stack for recursive algorithms is one of the parameter to find the space complexity of an algorithm. The second parameter is space for the data structures used. If there is any complex data structure used in the program, then we will also take that into account. But maximum examples that we will see throughout the course, we will see that complex data structures are not used. Hence, the space complexity of an algorithm totally depends on the space required for stack for recursive algorithms. And we are talking about the call stack. For a specific recursive algorithm, the space required for the call stack will tell us the space complexity of that algorithm. And we know this is same as the maximum number of activation records at a time within the call stack. And we already know how to find the maximum number of activation records at a time. We know it is same as the depth of function calls. For a recursive algorithm, depth of function calls is also called the depth of recursion. And if we know the depth of recursion, we can easily find the space complexity of a recursive algorithm. So, space complexity of a recursive algorithm is same as space for the data structures used, if any, plus depth of recursion. So, this is the formula for calculating the space complexity of a recursive algorithm. Now, we know how to find the space complexity. We are done with this topic also. In this lecture, we learned a lot of concepts, which eventually helped us in finding the formula for space complexity of recursive algorithms. Now, we are ready to solve some problems. We will take some examples to properly understand how to find the space complexity of a recursive algorithm. And therefore, in the next lecture, we will discuss the example to calculate the factorial of n and that too recursively. And through that example, we will learn how to find the space complexity of a recursive algorithm. So, with this, we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.